Whilst getting your bike set up is a relatively straightforward process, the thing that really defines your mountain bike as your bike is the little custom tips and tweaks you can do to it. So with that in mind, when I have my own bike, what I like to do is get suspension dialed in, and then after that, these are my seven best tips and tweaks. So without a doubt, the dropper post is one of the most useful bits of kit a modern mountain bike can have on it. And of course, they're very useful in all sorts of terrain for getting your saddle, up, saddle down out of the way. But if, like me, you ride in bumpy conditions or sometimes wet and muddy conditions, it can be a bit of a struggle sometimes to keep grip on the actual lever itself. So I've seen all sorts of little custom hacks and bodges for this. Some people have actually gone as far as cutting with a hacksaw onto their levers to get a bit of traction or even using self-setting rubber. But really, you can't beat a good bit of skateboard grip tape. It's dirt cheap and you can just custom form it to fit your one. You can also use it on the brake levers themselves. Now I've got a Crank Brothers Highline dropper post on my bike and they actually make their own little kit of these little gripper pads that you can put on your own levers and they're mint. It grips nice and tidy and it's a nice little custom touch for your bike. So chain slap is one of the most frustrating things you can get on a bike. Not only is it loud with your chain rattling away on your frame, it actually chips off your paint and it's not really good for your bike in the long term. So whilst a lot of bikes these days do come with chain stay protectors on them, Sometimes they're not actually a soft rubber. Like the harder rubber can still emit quite a bit of a noise. So what I always like to do straight away with any new bike I get is put a decent chainstay protector on to stop that. And what I tend to use is Scotch. It's 2228 tape. And this is a rubber mastic tape. You can get this from electrical retailers. And there are other similar ones out there, other unnamed mastic tapes you can get. And it's literally sticky back rubber. You can apply it to the length you need on your chain stay. It stays on there, whatever the weather. And because the rubber itself is actually very soft compound, it's got a good damping quality to it. Now, I also like to put some on the inside of my seat stay, just where the chain can also flick up and take away the paint. And if riding abroad, say in the Alps, um, I actually put some on the underside of the down tube too. I mean, this particular bike, my Canyon here, has got a down tube protector, so it doesn't need it but this stuff's really effective for that. And it comes in 25 mil width and also 50 mil if you want the extra protection. So this stuff is well worth looking into. Now clipless pedals are one of the most important things for me on my bike. I've always ridden clips and I prefer the way the bike feels with them. Now with that in mind, there's two types of pedals. There's the, the smaller, more cross country focused lightweight pedals. And you tend to run these with a more trail based shoe or the more heavy duty shoe and pedal offerings like these. So the thing I like about these is they still manage to make the bike feel like a, it's got a downhill feel with the flat pedals, but you've got all the benefits of clipping in. However, they're a lot harder to set up and get just right. And your shoe and pedal combo is absolutely essential to getting that real good feel. Now, while some riders will actually take a knife to the sole of the shoe to customize the, the cleat recess if they need to, a better way of doing it really is by using these little spacers. Now, although these are Crank Brothers spacers, you can use these on any cleats on the market, whether that's Time, Shimano, Look, etc. It really doesn't matter. And it's actually a better way of doing it because you remove the cleat slightly from the bottom of the sole and it just gets engagement that bit better. Now, whilst the plastic spacers are the best way to do this, I actually use a slightly different technique. So, I've always loved the, the firm clipping action of other pedals like Shimano, but I prefer the feel of a Crank Brothers pedal where you can actually move around more on it. And to get that same snappy feel, if I just unclip the pedal here, you'll see that I've got a metal spacer under the cleat. Now these are made by Crank Brothers and are actually designed to protect the sole of carbon shoes from the clip mechanism. What I've found actually is using them on these shoes means it's way easier to engage. You've got that really defined click when you clip in. It doesn't affect the feel of the pedal. Right, that's my little custom setup tip. So this setup tip is a bit of a weird one because it's not a common occurrence, but actually it's a preventative measure. So a long time ago, cut the story short, I was out on a ride and I lost a cleat bolt. And I was so far from home that it would, would have ruined my ride. And I was trying to find another bolt on the bike I could replace it with. But at the time, the only bolt suitable I didn't have because I had center lock rotors on the bike. I did bump into another cyclist and he let me pinch a bolt off his disc rotor though. So I replaced the cleat bolt with that. And although it got me home, it was pretty uncomfortable. Clipping in wasn't that good all the time, but it did work. So it made me think, why don't I carry a spare on my bike? Why not in the bag? If it's on the bike, I'm never gonna forget it. It's always there. So I now carry one of the countersunk bolts on each of my wheels. So whatever I do, I've got five normal disc rotor bolts and one countersunk bolt. Holds the disc rotor on just fine, and I know it's there for emergencies if that ever arises. 
So going along with the theme of keeping things on your bike that you might not need, but actually can save you when you're on that ride with no tools, one of the things I always tape onto the controls of my bike is a joining chain link. So be it SRAM or Shimano, depending on your preference, just get a bit of electrical tape, get one of those links and just tape it around one of your gear cables. It's always on your bike and you'll forget about it until that one time you're out for a ride and you snap your chain. You can fix this, no fuss, get back on the trail. Job done. Now most modern bikes have pretty good cable routing, but you can still get cable rub depending on how you run your, your bars, flip forwards, up, down, that sort of setup. So as you can see on my personal bike here, the cables do actually strike each other. Now I like my bikes to be as silent as possible. And I also don't really want my paint to get rubbed away. So a little trick I like to do is actually attach the cables together here using some electrical tape. It stops the cable wandering around within the frame as well because it's bound to the next one. Now, in addition to attaching the cables together with the tape, something I also like to do is, I'm not really a fan of the clear patches because I do find they discolour and come off in time. So what I actually like to use is the same rubber mastic tape I use on my chain stays and just put a little patch just under where the cables contact. So not only does it stop them rattling around, it stops them rubbing on the frame as well. And at the end of the day, it's all about making the bike silent. So for me, anyway, so that's my little custom tip there. So the last one's not really a custom setup tweak as such, it's more something I like to do before going riding. Now I really like to pay attention to my suspension and do like lower leg surfaces quite frequently to keep them running nice and smooth. But if I've been riding a lot of wet conditions or dry conditions, your seals can still dry out. So you can do a super fast little tweak just to get your forks running smoothly before you ride. Now the obvious choice would be to flip your bike upside down so that lower leg lube that's inside there will coat the bushings. But another little cheeky one you can do is just by simply rolling the garter spring down on the fork, taking the, the end of an uncut cable tie and just slide it between the stanchion and the wiper seal. You can just apply some decent suspension lube directly into the seals. Now, using the plastic end of a cable tie is good because it won't scratch your stanchion. Just make sure you don't do this with a screwdriver or anything else that's likely to damage either the seal or more importantly, your stanchion. It's a super fast little way of just applying some suspension lube wipe off the excess, go and hit the trails. Happy days. So hopefully seven of my little favorite tips have been helpful for you guys. I'd love to hear if you've got any little setup tips and tweaks you've got. So don't forget to leave a comment below. Uh, subscribe here by clicking the globe to get a brand new video every single day. And I'm also going to throw you to a couple of really helpful videos. One of them is how to set up a new bike. So if you want to click down here, really informative video. The other one is how to silence a bike. And that's not only from chain slap, but also creaks and stuff. So click down here. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like the video.